What is contaminants? Contaminants is substances that are toxic, persistent, and liable to by accumulate which give rise to an equivalent level of consent. It is also substances that have not been intentionally added to food and it may be present in food as a result of environmental contamination or through various stages of its production, packaging, transport, or holding. Next, the sources of contaminants. It can be divided into three different sources, which are physical, enters food at some stage of the production or preparation process. The common examples of the physical contaminants in food is including hair, fingernails, bandages, jewelry, broken glass, or staples. Next, for biological contaminants, it can be occurs when food becomes contaminated by living organisms or the substances they produce which causing foodborne illness and food poisoning. There are several types of microorganisms that can cause foodborne illness such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Lastly, for the chemical contaminants, it can be occurs when food comes into contact with or produces toxic chemicals which can lead to chemical food poisoning. Common example for the chemical contaminants is including cleaning products such as detergent and sanitizer, pesticides or herbicides, and toxic chemicals in metals and plastics. Next, we are looking to the classification of the chemical contaminants in food. There are four different types of chemical contaminants. First, agrochemical. We have pesticides such as fungicides, insecticides, herbicides, and fertilizers, also veterinary drugs. Second, environment and industrial contaminants. It has heavy metals like lead, cadmium, and mercury, PCBs or polychlorinated biphenyls and dioxins. Third, the compounds produced during processing and storage. We have heat produced chemical hazards such as acrylamide, furan, lipid degradation products and the non-thermal processing and storage like trans fatty acids. Lastly, packaging derived hazards, we have monomers such as vinyl chloride and also BPA. We are further looking to agrochemical types which consist of pesticides and veterinary drugs. Pesticides are chemicals that may be used to kill fungus, bacteria, insects, plant diseases, snails, slugs, or weeds, among others. While veterinary drugs are an essential component of animal husbandry and modern food production, but their residues can persist in animal-derived foods and present potential food safety risks. These are the several functions and the important components of chemical structure for the pesticides. First, fungicides. Fungicides is a specific type of pesticide that controls fungal disease by specifically inhibiting or killing the fungus causing the disease. The important compounds are dithiocarbamates and copper oxychloride. It can be seen on the picture. It has different compounds of fungicides that are made from dithiocarbamates. Next, insecticides are a type of pesticide that is used to specifically target and kill insects. Some insecticides include snail bait and killer and wasp killer. The important classes are chlorinated hydrocarbons and organophosphates. For example, this compound can be found in the endosulfan, carbofuran, permethrin, and malathion. Then, for herbicides, 
It is used to kill undesirable plants or weeds. Some herbicides will kill all the plants they touch, while others are designed to target one species. The important components are chlorates, copper sulfate, and calcium cyanamide. The last type of pesticides is fertilizers. Fertilizers is the natural or artificial substance containing the chemical elements that improve growth and productiveness of plants. The important elements needed are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, I'll be talking about the effects of processing on pesticide residue. Firstly, Washing. Washing is a common practice in most of households. A study shows that washing with sufficient amount of water can remove pesticide residue. Here are the factors affecting washing. First of all, location of the residue in the food. If the residue is on the surface, then washing is effective. However, if there's a systemic residue and settled in the tissue, then washing is not effective. Next, temperature. Hot washing and blanching are more effective than cold washing. Lastly, water solubility. Pesticide with higher water solubility can be removed easier. Secondly, using chemical solution on pesticide residue. We have two different solutions here. First, acidic solution. Soaking in acidic solution at concentration of 5 at 10% for 10 minutes indicates proficient reduction of pesticide residue. Acidic solution gives more pesticide dissipation than neutral and alkaline solution. An example of acidic solution will be vinegar. Next, neutral solution. Salt solution, or known as natrium chloride, is largely used to decontaminate the pesticide residue. Studies prove the efficacy of salt water washing for dislodging the pesticide from fruits and vegetable surfaces. Besides, it has been reported that as the concentration of the washing solution increased, the amount of pesticide residue removed also increased. Third, peeling, hulling, or trimming. Majority of pesticides are applied directly to crops, hence limited movement or penetration into the cuticle. Residues of the materials are confined to the outer space where they are amenable to removal in peeling, hulling, or trimming operation. Fourth, drying. In most of the cases, Simply because of water loss, the concentration of the pesticide increased proportionally. However, residues may evaporate and degrade depending on the pesticide. In addition, sunlight can cause photolysis or transformation of successful pesticides. Fifth, freezing and refrigeration. Freezing and refrigeration will slow both food decay and most chemical reaction. It can also decrease the pesticide residues in some vegetables. Lastly, by increasing the time of refrigeration, there is gradual increase in the reduction of pesticide residues. Lastly, canning. Most organophosphorus pesticides were unstable in canned product and the amount of residues decreased. This is because Heat application is an effective method in reducing pesticide residues. Okay, now let's talk about the effects of pesticide on human health. Firstly, this effect may depend on whether you get the pesticide on the skin or you swallow the pesticide or you inhale the pesticide. The amount and concentration of the pesticide may also affect. The first effect of pesticide is it can attack essential organ system, including the central nervous system. And if you come in contact with large amounts of pesticide, it may cause neurological damage, liver and kidney dysfunction, infertility, and cancer. Next, let's look at the symptoms. There are three types of pesticide poisoning, mild, moderate, and severe. For mild poisoning, you may have headaches, dizziness, nausea, diarrhea, insomnia, and irritation of the throat, eyes, skin, or nose. And for moderate poisoning, you may have blurred vision, confusion, vomiting, constriction of the throat, and rapid pulse. Lastly, for severe poisoning, you may have chemical burns, unconsciousness, and inability to breathe, and excessive phlegm in the airways. 
And that's all from me. Without further ado, let's move to the analysis of contaminant. There are two types of analysis method usually conducted for contaminant. Firstly, is the gas chromatography mass spectrometry or we call GCMS, which is suitable for volatile and semi-volatile compound found in the contaminant. It separates the components with similar boiling point. It also detects the peaks and the retention time. Another method is the liquid chromatography mass spectrometry or LCMS, which is suitable for more polar, thermolabile, and less volatile compound. Besides the modern and new generation pesticides such as fenvalerate and delta methrin are also analyzed using the LCMS. Now that we have discussed on common method of contaminant analysis, let's discover a deeper understanding on how they work. The maximum residue level, MRL, is the highest amount of an individual pesticide residue that is permitted to be present in or on food or animal feed. Thus, it is crucial to operate the method available to ensure the food safety level. The process for analyzing pesticide residues involves extracting the residues from the matrix into the acetonitrile. The cleanup process with silica gel to remove other components and proceed with the analytical procedure to identify and measure the amount of the pesticide residue. Interestingly, there are various research works that have been done in contaminant analysis. One of them is Malathion analysis which was studied by Latifa et al. in 2011. For your information, Malathion is a compound in insecticide which is from organophosphate group. In this study, it helps to increase the value and yields of Cantella aesthetica or in Malay is called down pegaga. In GCMS system, is determined by using mass spectrometer. The samples were taken and divided into three. Soak with tap water, soak with salt water, and untreated sample. The samples were extracted via liquid-liquid extraction and then cleaned up by the silica gel and then they were run in the GCMS to obtain the chromatogram, then the results were interpreted. Here is the schematic diagram of a GCMS system. It's a complex machine that can detect a compound even from a small sample. The extracted sample and solvent is first introduced in the liquid injector and get vaporized onto the head of a column. The vaporized contents are then carried through the column by an inert gas, which is called the mobile phase, which does not interact with compounds of interest. Then it will pass through the chromatographic column in the GC oven, which contains the stationary phase, and the separation occurs here by the interaction of the solid with the stationary phase. After that, the effluent from the GC passes through the transfer line into the ion trap. The mass spectrometry begins here when the molecules undergo the electron ionization, which the ions are then analyzed according to their mass to the charge ratio. Ions are detected by the electron multiplier which produces a signal proportional to the ions. It identifies the organic molecules according to their molecular and fragments weight by peak detector. A precise molecular weight determination can be used to provide the information about the molecular formula of the substances. A precise molecular weight determination can be used to provide the information about the molecular formula of the pesticides. 